Here's an image from the rear camera for a bit better of the contrast skin. Whew, man. That is, a, that is an experience. That really is an experience. But there's a lot to unpack with the Apple Vision Pro. So if you're joining us for the very first time, Thunder E here from Board at Work. Thank you for watching this video on the channel and definitely hit the subscribe button. So we have the Apple Vision Pro. I pre-ordered it, it's here. What is that experience? Now, I will be honest with you guys, I've been using this for the last five hours uh, today. So when you're watching this video, this is just straight out, picking up my device, doing the unboxing. If you wanna check it out, it's on the channel. Um, seeing all the things in the box and then just using it all the way. So the very first thing I'll tell you is the setup. Setup is pretty simple and straightforward. You've seen other videos from people like uh, Brian Tong, I Justine. Uh, the setup process is pretty straightforward. Now, when it comes to using it, this is where um, I think we should start talking about what the design choices are from Apple. Uh, the device itself is heavy. I'll just put it that way. It feels heavy. Uh, for me, within the first five minutes of using it, it felt heavy. Um, and that was because I was using the solar strap, which is the main strap that Apple kind of showcased at the events. Now, uh, for full disclosure, um, I did mention when I did the demo at DubDub that it didn't feel heavy. Again, that was not a final unit, so it's a bit different there. That being said though, that strap just doesn't work for me. I went with the strap with the overhead band, which is a little bit better, uh, but it's still not as good as something like say the strap on the MetaQuest 3. Now, speaking of the MetaQuest 3 to this, I'm gonna do a video comparing that fully, but just design wise, uh, you can see the design differences there between both of them. And also the Quest 3 just weighs lighter. So weight is the first issue that I encountered. Definitely um, try and use a, a, a band that fits you best because that's something that's gonna be really important. The one thing about this device is it rests in, on your face right here in the front on the bridge of your nose and on your cheekbone. So you're going to feel it quite a bit. And again, to me, the weight is the biggest issue that I've experienced. But okay, taking that aside, how is it? Now, when you jump into the world of the Apple Vision Pro, you're, you're greeted with this interface that's very familiar. You see the Apple apps, you see uh, things like um, uh, Safari, even Apple TV, things that you know. So it's easy to navigate and move. And once you get the hang of the pinch, honestly, it takes maybe about, it might take you maybe a minute tops to use it. It's very easy to navigate. Now, some things are not as intuitive as others where the locations are. So the control center is really big because that's where you can do some screen recording. Um, you can also check your battery percentage, all these different things. That you have to kind of look up, pinch, and then access to actually get to those, to that function. So again, there's a lot of fine tuning that needs to happen with this device to do that. But when you surround yourself with a bunch of screens and you can hop from one screen to another, it really works out well. And the spatial audio is well mapped to this. So if I'm playing a game here, um, speaking of gaming, we'll talk about that in a second. And then moving over to say a YouTube video, the sound tracks properly and it's coming from the exact direction. So you really enjoy the spatialness of this headset. Oh, Almost found it. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, so yeah, we'll get into that. So the first thing I want yeah. to talk about is the design, right? So it looks exactly the same as the S23 Ultra, which looked exactly the same as the S22 Ultra. Now, I think, you know, I've been seeing this a lot in the comments. I'm not hugely bothered about it because I still think it's a really good design. I think the biggest change here is that we've got titanium, right? So Apple had titanium for the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, how's the field of view? Field of view is smaller than I would expect, but still looks really good because it is sharp. I mean, it is basically a 4K display there. And when you're watching content on there, it really looks good. Um, and it's a very, very fun experience. Uh, some of the things that, you know, Apple showcased and even just a quick demo of like that dinosaur coming in uh, felt really impressive. Those are kind of the AR tools that I definitely liked with this and I think made a lot of sense. Now, personas, that's something that we've seen uh, 
you know, creators like Marquez, uh, Justine, Brian uh, create their persona. So I made my persona uh, and it kind of looks like me, honestly. Um, but I also did a call with Danny and his persona sort of looks like him, but it looks like him from Dynasty Warriors from like the PS2 or PS3, something like that. Not good. Uh, very stiff and rigid. Um, mine also feels the same way, but it's a beta. I don't blame them for this or anything. I'm just saying that that's what it, definitely looks and feels like. Uh, so you kind of get that idea that it's um, it's very stiff because it, you know, it can't really uh, map in real time your facial expressions. It's just trying to mimic that for you. But again, it's a good representation. And Danny said something really interesting to me during our call. He said that uh, if someone has never met you in person and this is the first way they saw you and then they meet you in person, the persona really gives a better representation of how you look as opposed to the other way around. So I kind of understand it from the aspect where if you've always seen the avatar, you see the person, you're like, oh yeah, you kind of look like avatar. It gives me, I now know who you are. Now, the other aspects of this device that have to do with just the keyboard communications and things like that. I've heard people talk about the keyboard in different ways. To me, I think the uh, floating keyboard works really well. For me, it does. And there are two ways to input. You can go ahead and type on that keyboard but using just your uh, two index fingers, uh, that's just the fastest way. Or you can look at the keys and of course just pinch. That I prefer using the pinch just to put in passwords and things like that. But if I want to type, I use the keyboard. You can also use Siri for voice commands as well, if you use Siri at all. Our spatial video is something that was quite interesting. I, I got some from Brian for some reason, I just couldn't play it properly, but I'll put them here for you. Uh, but I also uh, recorded one myself um, and I did like the immersive view as well. It looked really nice, uh, very solid. Uh, I think um, it, it kind of feels like a memory or you're diving back into something that you, you've you experienced in the past. So that is um, a very, very interesting aspect to it. Now, uh, the device itself has an external battery. That's something that, you know, you've seen uh, in other videos. It's an interesting battery pack. It's like 3,166 milliamps. Uh, it gives you about two hours um, in terms of battery use. Uh, I would say it's probably lasted me close to that in terms of battery use. What's interesting about by the battery is that the weight's design is designed basically proprietary. So you've got this massive giant lightning port Yes, there's a lightning cable from here to this proprietary dock on the headset itself. The one on the headset I do like because it kind of locks into place to ensure that it's actually connected. Um, and then you've got USB type C if you want to char charge it or top it off. But you got to carry this everywhere with you. Like this is the thing that you have to put in your, you know, your jacket or pocket or something like that, which is just not conducive. And to me again, when you consider the weight of the device itself and then the weight of the battery separately, uh, mm, 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 it's a bit heavy. Now, performance of processing power on this thing is really good. When you're watching content on there, you're experiencing content, it's it's impressive. I think the, the hardware and having an M chip in here really makes a lot of sense, but I think this truly feels to me like a first gen device. That's what it is. And it's something that I would not recommend you pick up unless of course you just really want to check it out and you have $3,500 to spend. That's just my first impression on there is that it's really good. It feels like gen one, a very well designed gen one device, uh, but it does give a lot of roadmap. Now, some of you are gonna ask, okay, or some of you would say, my Quest does a lot of things. And we'll get into that when I do my comparison uh, with the Quest. I'm gonna be covering um, a lot of gaming between both of them and so just applications and see how they are. In terms of apps, there's no Netflix uh, on here. Um, there is, however, HBO Max as well as also Disney. Uh, so you do have that. Um, but you can watch all those applications off the browser. You can't pin the browser apps onto your home screen yet. That's just not available uh, at this point in time. But again, it's a new device. It's fresh, it's something different, uh, at least from Apple. Um, and we'll have to see how they update it to match the competition and also bring something new and different. Right now, it truly feels more like a VR headset than an AR headset. There are some, I mean, there are a lot of AR elements to it, but really the VR experience in terms of just kind of locking you in is pretty much what you're gonna expect. But again, you can put screens around you and use that. I'm just waiting for the killer apps that 
uh, will get people to go like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. I think that is what we're all waiting for. So those are my first initial thoughts on the Apple Vision Pro. I do like it, um, but I have to spend some more time. Again, five, six hours max, I've used it. So if you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment. <sighs> okay. Boom, bah. It is so sharp. So, so sharp. <laughs>